Hi Agilis. In the 2020 Scrum Guide, the concept of prodigal was introduced. And I have to confess, when I saw it initially, I thought it was just another set of words for the vision that was mentioned in the 2017 guide. The word vision wasn't capitalized in the 2017 guide, so the assumption was it was optional, but it could be interpreted as being required, I guess. It is useful to have a vision, the problem is that sometimes the vision can be so big that it might be difficult for a scrum team to get their heads around it. And they might struggle to commit to the scrum values and embrace the three pillars of scrum. And therefore empiricism itself might be impeded by the breadth and depth of a vision. It's a very good idea, in my opinion, to have a vision as long as you treat the vision as some kind of direction that we're going in. It's not set in stone or anything. We will learn things along the way through evidence-based management. We will learn whether we're on the right track or the wrong track. We're usually slightly off. And when I was talking to John Carter, ex-chief engineer of Bose, who invented the noise-canceling headphones, when they discovered a noise-canceling it was actually a side effect of another optimizing goal that they're actually striving for, which was higher fidelity sound. So a lot of innovation happens by accident. And the reality is that we will learn things as we go along and sometimes we will persevere. And other times we will pivot in a slightly different direction, like into noise cancellation and bows, or we will stop. So it's possible we might never get to that vision at all. The thing is that while it's very useful and inspiring to have a vision as something to aim for, because it can sometimes be a bit overwhelming, the prodigal is often seen as an interim step towards a vision. There is no time horizon set in the Scrum Guide for a prodigal. Time horizons are optional, you don't have to use them. I personally find them very useful. What are we talking about here? Are we talking about something that's two to three months, six to nine months? 9 to 12 months, what are we talking about here? And so having some kind of time horizon is useful. It depends on the context. Context is king. Ordinarily, 6 to 9 months is what I would be targeting for our product goal. But it's not about the time. It's about what are we going to achieve? What are we aiming for? What are we focused on? So the big value for me from the product goal in the 2020 Scrum Guide is more focus. So when the 2020 Scrum Guide was reconfigured, one of the things they did was they moved the sprint goal into the sprint backlog. And they also made the definition of done a commitment to the increment. So the sprint goal is a commitment to the sprint backlog and the definition of done is a commitment to the increment. And I'm guessing that the people who were involved in doing the 2020 Scrum Guide might have realized, oh, there's no commitment to the product backlog. And so it made real sense then to have a product goal. And in my opinion, the product goal is more important than the sprint goal because this is what we're this is what we're aiming for. There's not a lot you can achieve within a sprint. It depends on your context and so on. But sprint is short. The definition should have done requires a lot of quality to be included. We don't leave waste behind us. We don't leave undone work behind us. We don't leave an inventory of more work to be done. So we like to put work behind us. And that means we get work finished, we implement all the levels of quality that we think we need, and that includes technical standards and product quality standards. So there's not a whole lot we can get done really in a sprint. And so having a product goal to strive for gives us, a, I don't want to say the word target, but I guess it is a kind of a target, except it's a target that can move. It can move not because we keep on changing our mind all the time, but because we'll be learning through the evidence from our learnings from experiments and so on that we might need to change the protocol or we might decide you know what we've achieved enough already maybe we can move on and think about the next protocol so there is only one protocol you can be seeding subsequent protocols in the product backlog that's okay but you don't proceed to the next protocol without finishing or cancelling the current protocol that's protocol i hope you enjoy this much thank you